Hello, my name is Richard Husky, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Communication at UC Davis. And today I'd like to tell you about a project my colleagues and I are working on that's focused on developing hyperscanning paradigms and tasks in very naturalistic settings. And so for that, the first thing we're going to think about is interactional synchrony. We know that when people interact together, uh, not only their, uh, their facial expressions often synchronize, their behavioral expressions often synchronize, we know that these, the synchronization seems to play some important functions in social interaction. In addition to these sort of behavioral synchronization, so we see neural synchronizations. Essentially, people's brains become correlated during task. Um, and this correlation has important components to the way that people interact socially as well. And the way people typically measure this is through some sort of hyperscanning paradigm where pairs of participants uh, engage in a joint task while imaging is occurring. And these hyperscanning tasks typically involve a number of trade-offs, everything from spatial versus temporal resolution or using fMRI or EEG. Is the task heavily constrained, like it might be in an fMRI environment, or is it more uh, semi-naturalistic, like, like it might be with EEG or FNIRS? <clears throat> are you trading off high internal validity, or are you trading off high external validity? And then lastly, of course, the long-standing concerns around cost versus how large should the true sample size be. And what we're trying to do is find out a way to balance all of these trade-offs. And the way we've been doing that is by using low-cost EEG with, um, and pairing that with this new task we developed called AR Tangram or Augmented Reality Tangram. And together, we're able to get a naturalistic uh, hyperscanning paradigm that allows for large sample sizes while still maintaining good internal validity. And so to describe the, the task itself, um, tangrams themselves are a um, pretty well-validated uh, behavioral procedure. They've been around since the 80s. Our innovation is by in implementing an augmented reality or AR component. People complete the task using uh, mobile devices. <clears throat> and the way it works is pairs of participants are shown an array of uh, shapes. And among the pair of participants, one individual is known as the director, the other is known as the matcher. The director sees a focal shape and then tries to use uh, language to describe that shape and the matcher has to guess what the correct shape is. And so when participants are doing this task, you can manipulate everything from are they friends versus are they strangers? Are they people that have worked together or not? How many trials people have to do, et cetera. And along the way, you can measure all sorts of interesting dependent variables. You can measure how long it takes for them to complete the trials, how accurate they are, the linguistic similarity of the language that participant pairs use, their neural similarities measured by ISC and these sort of things, self-report measures and the like. And so to give you a better idea of what the task looks like, let's go to this middle column and look at the top left figure. Here you can see an image of what it looks like to be the director. You have the focal tangram highlighted in green and the matcher sees the same array of tangrams but has to guess what is the correct tangram based on the director's description. On the um, right side of the panels, you see a participant uh, engaging in the task, holding the phone, looking at the QR code to see the tangrams. And then in the far right uh, image, you see the same participant wearing the Muse EEG headset. So if you're not familiar with what a Muse EEG headset is, um, it's a low cost consumer grade headset, it costs about $250. It comes with four dry electrodes and sensors, along with a reference sensor. It connects to a computer wirelessly with Bluetooth. And thanks in part to some excellent uh, open source software development, there are a number of new, um, new tools that allow for recording simultaneously from multiple Muse devices, integrating those recordings with a number of other uh, data streams, including say like an audio auditory stream for each participant. And then there are even techniques for storing and saving those data in a BIDS compliant format. So pretty cool. At the same time, there's also a lot of development and validation around Muse and looking to see what the quality of the data is. Um, 
some of these tools give you real-time diagnostics of how good your signal quality is. So you can see an image here of a high quality signal where we're not getting a lot of noise. In addition, there are some helpful tips and tricks that researchers have been using to get good quality data. Some are very familiar for people that are already using EEG, so skin cleaning, skin abrasion. Uh, other techniques, if you coat the sensors in sulfur chloride, that seems to be helping increase signal quality, as well as applying actually like a little bit of an electrolyte gel, so new prep and these sort of things. So losing the dry sensor capability a little bit, but at the same time getting a better signal quality. So our lab is currently working to develop this sort of task. We're in the middle of a data collection right now. We had hoped to share some results by the time of CNS, but because of the pandemic, we had to delay and then suspend components of our data collection. So we're actually in the middle of data collection right now. But in some previous work, we've actually done some validation studies and showcased how the MUSE EEG system is actually very useful for doing some types of ERP analysis and actually gives a uh, good ERP measurement like you might expect from a more high quality system. And then um, if you're interested in monitoring this project and seeing our developments, you can of course follow its GitHub page right now. We have all the directions and steps for how to pull this task off as we continue to develop code and additional tools for doing this sort of work. And we'll update the GitHub to include that as well. And so with that, I wanna say thank you so much for your time. And if you have any questions, I'd love to chat. Thank you very much.